Okay, so we're working on my mill now. I just took the collet and collet stop and the work directly out of the collet truck on the lathe, and we're gonna go into a four-sided collet block. Um, I use the collet blocks just because they work for my short run stuff. Um, I find them easier to use when I'm milling the ports, especially because uh, some not all uh, it rotating indexes have keyways and I depend on that keyway to indicate in my ports so I'm just tightening up the work in the collet block so I have on my jaw a collet stop or sorry a vice stop that's going to hit up against the collet block so it'll be repeatable um, I don't have any of my axes actually set so I need to do that basically I'm just going to come in with the end mill touch off on this face the face of the what will be the bottom bearing um, just to give my index there and then I will lock that axis down because that's not going to move we're only moving the x axis not the y so bring up the knee I like to use the knee for this because I can easily dial in where I need on my z depth okay so there we're touching so back this off. I'm going to lock down my y-axis and then I'm going to bring the knee up a bit. So basically we're cutting the flats now. So I'm just trying to get until I'm taking a manageable depth of cut. I'm going to go a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm going to flip the collar block over and do the other side and measure where we're at. This is a quick way to indicate those features, 90 or 180 degrees from each other. Wow, that's never happened before. So the target number I shoot for on my stop arms is between 1.186 and 1 .0 So there's a two thou variance and right now we're at 186, so we're at the lower end, 186, 187. The calipers aren't a good measure, but that's not a, not a very high tolerance part. So that was, I nailed it, which is, that never happens. Usually you uh, stop the depth and you walk it up using the knee and I would lock down the knee. I didn't even do it then. Um, but this gets you so part to part in and out of the collet block, you have a very repeatable way. You can do hundreds of parts if you, if you needed to. And each time measuring the parts and you can make little adjustments because the axes do tend to move um, especially if you're locking and unlocking the columns, it, they will move so you can just really adjust. And over this run of 21 parts, I had all 21, except for the first one, which I usually use as a dud part, which I'm surprised has made it. All 21 of them were within that tolerance, or if not spot on 1875, which is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm just going to cut the, the third side now, just to get it out. And then we'll take a look at that feature up close. Finish it out just to give us a flat surface on those three sides. Cool. Wow, that was amazing. Okay, so we're on dimension. Let me give you a close up here wherever my camera is. So those are the flats we just cut. So that formed the stop arm. Don't pay attention to the surface finish on the wall. It doesn't matter, it all gets turned away. But that's the feature we just cut and it's that simple to do. Just with a collet block and a vise. 
No fancy tools needed. You could even do this on the lathe if you really needed to. But so now the next step after this is cutting the ports, and this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, so this this is a rotor with an undercut, um, and the undercut is actually how this lip comes out over the actual diameter of the rotor. So these are similar to the way I do them in that they have an arc to shorten the stroke of the rotor, but these were done with a, these are likely done on a CNC machine. Um, but in the manual world, they would have been done with a swing arm fixture or on a horizontal mill with a fixture that actually, or sorry, on a vertical mill with the fixture that moved uh, a undercutting end mill or on a horizontal mill with a fixture that moved the actual rotor. Um, the way I do them, so this is the test rotor I did for these rotary trumpets, is I take a normal ball end mill. This one's a bit larger than the bore of these valves, but you take that end mill and you're going to plunge straight down into on the center line of the rotor. And then we form that arc by using the rad of the actual end mill by stepping over 200 thou back to center, stepping over another 200 thou. So doing that transfers the radius of that end mill into the corners of that pocket, giving it that corner radius. And it does not leave an undercut, but if you calculate the volumetric comparisons between uh, a section of straight tubing at 468 bore, say it's a 468 bore instrument, a straight tubing at 468 bore, and a volumetric comparison of the actual tolerance I'm removing out of the, the material, it is plus, or, it, it, it has a minuscule amount of difference in the volume. So I, I think it's a good substitute or a good, just a different way to do it and get the same benefits. And I think it looks cool. Um, so that, that's actually a really simple thing to do on a manual machine. You manage your, you manage your Z, because this is how, it, so this is how the rotor is held in the machine before it's cut. You manage your Z depth and you manage your center line position on the X. And all you're doing is moving that X axis back and forth in plunging with the quill to a set Z depth. And it, it's pretty dead simple. I mean, you could, you can do uh, everything I've shown so far, you can do on a lathe or a mill from Harbor Freight. You don't need fancy equipment to do this stuff. You just need to attention to the detail. So that's what we're gonna do next. Um, but the, the hardest part when I was learning to make valves for me to get my mind around doing is if you look at a valve from a manufacturer or a valve maker, if you look at the stop arm uh, drive dog, the square sides are not parallel to the ports. So I spent a lot of time thinking about how I'd actually do this, you know, in, in lieu of Every time you make a rotor, this is not a repeatable or sustainable process. Every time you make a rotor, you look at the flats of that dog and you, you set them up pretty close to 45 degrees off of the ports. And that's just not sustainable. You could do it. And the reason that would work is because you're using anyways to align these flats. You're using uh, the stop arm and the bumper. So if you get it within probably five degrees of those flats proportionally to these uh, fillets you're fine it's just gonna be a little more of a hassle to align those so if you're just doing a one-off valve as a replacement then that's a perfectly adequate way to do it but since I wanted to make quantity I made this so this is a 5c collet um, but instead of a collet stop you can buy off the you know internet or wherever you're buying your stuff I made a collet stop essentially don't look at that but it's ugly it's just a piece of steel that has a 3 16 slot in it it does not go all the way through doesn't need to all it needs to do is take that 3 16 just undersized 3 16 so it's a slip fit uh, dog and it needs to orient that dog 
to the keyway that is on 5C collets. So that keyway will allow you to repeatedly use a collet block or an indexer if it has a keyway to use the 90 perfect, you know, hopefully perfect 90 degrees of the collet block to get you even sides in relation to the flats on that uh, rotor. And that's a really cool way to do, but I mean, the, the reason this is important is because on a CNC, which is, you know, a, really a great way to make rotors, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of positives there. You don't really need a skilled person to run it every day. You just need a skilled person to set it up. But if, you know, on today's CNC, you would take a bar, say this is your bar. You would have this sticking out of your lathe with live tooling. You would cut the ports, cut the ports, cut the ports, and then the lathe would be able to index the live tools and you would just cut the flats. And it's not, not a huge deal for that because that's just what the machines do. Um, but for me, since I have to do these things in 20 or 30 different setups, um, it becomes important to be able to repeatedly do that with fixturing. And this is a dead simple, where is it? This is a dead simple way to fixture it. All it did is, you know, I sacrificed a collet, but that's five bucks or whatever. Um, and this will last, you know, as long as I'm doing it this way. So all, all that happens, so here's my blank. Um, it fits in there. Let me get this other collet out of the block. So we got that. Um, got that in the collet block. Okay, and all we do is in the milling vise, set that up 90 degrees to the vise. We come through, touch off off the face of the collet block, which is a pretty, a surface that we can trust. Um, so we touch up off that face, offset our Y to where the center line of the ports goes through, and we plunge left and right. Flip the collet block over. Don't have to mess with the uh, Y offsets anymore. That's a set it and forget it. Plunge left and right. That's it. That's all it takes. Then we remove, remove it from the block. And then all I do to QC this, the easiest way to test how much material is left in between the center of the ports is take a pair of, I have calipers that have long jaws and you just measure it and it should be for my designed rotor it should be about 40 thousandths left in there so it's a pretty thin wall section so which makes this a really lightweight rotor um, and for rotary trumpets that's what everyone wants is a lightweight rotor um, but that's it so we're gonna go set that up on the mill and cut a few ports show how that's done <laughs>